it's five oh it's five oh one and it's June twenty seventh, uh, twenty twenty four. It's time for the monthly meeting of the Bristol County Water Authority. The first item is call to order. The meeting has been called to order. Um, next item is public input. I don't see any members of the general public here tonight, so we'll move on to approval of minutes. Um, the first uh, minutes are approval of the minutes for the annual meeting. Move for proof. Second. Second. And I'm going to point out that on page three of the minutes, you may recall that your humble chairman made an error and it's reflected in, um, in, uh, on page three. And I had uh, mistakenly appointed um, uh, Director Fournier in the uh, was supposed to be our good friend from Bristol, our other good friend from Bristol. Um, uh oh, no, I can't think of his name. Robert Martin. <laughs> Bob Martin. <laughs> <laughs> so that that be the only correction, if, if you will. Um, uh, that if I can put that forward as an amendment, uh, approve or incorporate that in the motion. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion with the um, amendment. Aye. 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 Any opposed? The yeah. ayes have it. Moving on to the minutes of the board meeting of uh, May 30th. Um, do I have a motion to? Uh, so moved. Second. Yeah. I do it's have a been question. moved and second. Yes, I questions. Do, I do have a question, uh, and you may or may not want to do this, but on the presentation uh, on the former water treatment facility, we did talk about that that was going to get addressed by the properties committee. Uh, that's not mentioned in the minutes. I'm not passionately thinking it needs to be, but it was something that was talking We can about. add that. We can add that in. So. Any other corrections, uh, concerns, issues? Um, with that, amendment, um, all in favor of the motion to approve? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Where should we put that amendment? Um, where would you like it, Richard? Uh, I think probably um, the here. Maybe. I think it probably just is. Yeah, Lawrence can insert it in as a separate. Uh, in the last, in the last, in the last sentence, the first paragraph, or its own separate paragraph, the uh, properties committee will take. Information from the presentation under the advisory. That's just a good fact. Is that going to be Okay. Um, we took a vote. We voted on that. Do we vote on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> hey, the next item on the agenda. <laughs> Director of Director's Report, Mr. Kutus. All right, good evening, everybody. Okay. Um, uh, Pawtucket uh, Pipeline Project. Um, as noted previously, we uh, do have the 60% roadway utility plans. Um, we're close to finalizing our review, um, and they've also been forwarded to each province and their consultants. They have uh, CDM Smith on board to do a uh, third party review of those plans as well. And uh, we also have the preliminary plans for the blending station uh, on the review. That station is designed to take water from um, both uh, pocket water and uh, treat that water so it is the same as the water coming from Providence. So we won't have issues within the pipelines. Um, and that that concept for the station has already been approved by the Department of Health. Uh, we met with Beta's project manager uh, in the middle of this past month. Uh, we do have an updated schedule. It's provided in your packet. Um, we've been pushing them to get you know, this project into the hands of all the different you know, numerous agencies that got to require sign-offs. Um, and at this time, they're looking at finalizing Plans by something by the end of this year with applications to permit agencies in early 2025. Um, 
you know, because the design is something that they can control. I mean, once it gets into the hands of the permitting agencies, it's kind of out of our hands. So, um, other than us, us being pests and constantly uh, calling these agencies, but um, we've made some headway since since I wrote my report here. Uh, Cindy Mack had a phone conversation with their attorney. Um, all intents and purposes, that agreement's been finalized, and um, hopefully bringing it to the board at the next meeting. Steve, with respect to the pipeline project, mm -hmm. as I understand it, there is going to likely, overwhelmingly likely, be some element of delay due to the bridge. Yes. And is there a risk that because of that delay, some of what we're doing could end up no longer being valid? Either we get permits which expire, or the plans are forced to change? Are, are they thinking about that possibility? Uh, I don't think it's going to change the plans, um, and yeah, I don't think it's going to change the design. Um, I, I think it's just going to change when they're going to allow us out on Pawtucket Avenue to, to do the work. It's a traffic <coughs> management situation. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, because you know, each, each, each province has probably suffered the most with traffic. Uh, conditions uh, due to the bridge outage, um, you know, and, and, and Pawtucket Avenue being the main north-south uh, route, and that's the route that we're taking uh, to get to Pawtucket, yep. right? Um, but, you know, delays, delays in actually doing the work, though, does increase costs because every year, right, prices go up. All right, the demo for the water treatment plant, we're still waiting on um, a couple of um, uh, submittals from PAR, that being the survey and the architectural analysis of the old station structure. Um, they've also gone into the buildings to do a hazardous materials analysis, but uh, we'll, we'll be holding off on actually preparing the final demo documents until we know the water treatment plants uh, for, those, for those facilities. <coughs> Um, for the dam removal project, we did uh, recently, and, uh, on June 13th, we got our, well, on June, early June 6th, we got our DEM wetlands approval for the extension and the modification uh, to expand the, um, the amount of fill to be removed from the earth embankment. And the contractor is, is everyone's been controlled by Schoolhouse Road, but they're back out on site and taking uh, more of the dam out. Um, the lower dam has been done, and after the shoreline plantings uh, have also been completed. Uh, the shoreline plantings were completed by the Safety Bay staff. Um, and a couple other items just to note. Uh, on June 10th, 12th, a presentation of the project was made at EPA Southeast New England Program Symposium, which was held at Roger Williams University. Um, this, our, our dam project was one of a number of environmental approval projects. Uh, being undertaken in, in Rhode Island and in southeast Massachusetts. Uh, and also, uh, June 17th, um, I, along with Wendy Ferguson from Save the Bay, entertained about 20 or four members from Save the Bay, uh, part of the dam removal project, and give an overview of the project. And, and they're all filled with the work that we Uh, meter replacement program, um, with all due respect, I hope we'd like to take this item off uh, my report because uh, we are now at 100% complete, thanks to Joe and staff uh, and the leader department for working together to complete this project. I believe that was one of your annual goals as well, so it's right. nice to get that one off the <laughs> list. Mission complete. It's two of the year we got together. That's great. Yeah, I didn't think you'd ever get all of it. Uh, I don't know if there's any other running water system that has 100% of the We got it done. Um, lead service line replacement program. Um, we did complete our first private side renewal uh, this past month, and I think there's a couple of them still in the works. Uh, we continue to meet with customers to discuss uh, specific project scope. Uh, BCWA properties, I have no new item to report for this past month. Um, public information. Or uh, let me let me ask about the um, okay. the lead service removal. Yeah, that was a residential. Yes. 
And, and did they take advantage of yes. the low interest loans? They did. Yeah. And that was, was there any issues associated with setting up that loan? No. No. It was good. Very happy, happy customer. Okay. She went out and helped the staff, helped yeah. the crew. <laughs> yes. Literally. <laughs> oh. The, um, I, are there any others that are pending at this point? Uh, two more are confirmed, and we have one more that we're going to meet with on uh, the week of July 8th because they're out of town. Um, but we have two more that uh, have a day. Now, generally speaking, um, what is the interest in having this done? Are they concerned about health impacts, or they just see it as a good opportunity to improve their system or all of the above or? Um, one of the folks actually is a unique customer in, in that they actually have a full lead line and, and that is very rare in our system. Um, so we've been talking to him for quite a few years. Um, he has done analytical testing to, to just stay on top of it because of his exposure based on the full lead. Um, but his um, angle with working for us was, was cost. So yeah. He has historical costs from contractors to try to um, remove it, um, but he, he, he wanted to try to have it um, uh, reimbursed through, through some sort of program. Now, and and how does that work um, with the customer and getting it done? Do they contract it um, to have the work done? Through in the our program? Or yeah, through, through, a normal no, through, through our program. Through our program, oh, yeah. they're going to utilize our water main improvement contract. That is the only contract. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but any any customer can do a private side renewal with a with a qualified. Uh, as long as they meet our standards and so forth. Yeah, they have to put in yeah. the materials that we require and, and things like that. Okay. Um, so that's that person. He has a full lead. The other person has um, just the galvanized. So I think he's doing it because they are susceptible to failure. They galvanized. They get brittle. They break. They crack. They fall. Um, and he's he's looking at that from from that perspective. So, a um, couple of different perspectives. The the folks that we're meeting with in the uh, the second week of July, um, it's a much older home, very old. Um, so they're looking at it as as potentially just time, not not so not so much the the health water quality aspect. Again, because it's not a full in line. <coughs> Thank you. Um, public information, our 2023 water quality report is prepared and completed. Uh, this is actually a requirement, a uh, regulatory requirement by DOH and EPA. Um, a lot of the information that's contained within that report is, is kind of standardized by those agencies. Um, the report's on the website and we sent postcards to all the customers informing them on the, on the web link and we also provide printed copies of the same for the copy that you have within your um, packet to the town halls and, and libraries. Do you ever get any response from customers about the information that's provided? It's all positive. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I got a call not that long after we uh, put this out um, from a customer wanting information on, on PFAS. Um, and they, they do occasionally get calls. Yeah, no, no, Steve, I had one question on the, on the report, just on yeah. the lack of knowledge yeah. on water, but it mentions in here that in 2017, Providence Water did a formal assessment threat. So that's seven years ago now. Is that like a normal time horizon? How often do these things take place? Because on one hand, seven years seems like a long time, but it may be pretty hard it's not. So. Was that for sure? Uh, okay. It was under when does my drinking water, where's my drinking water bunk okay. in the second paragraph? You know, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Okay. So we did have a requirement to perform a, a formal risk and resilience assessment within the past few years, and I'm not sure if we all had the same timeline, um, but we did perform a system-wide assessment, uh, and I'm not sure if that's what Providence is, is referring to. But that language is provided to us from Providence um, that, that we just input in here because they are responsible for the water quality um, 
um, have the source data in the root plane. Yeah. They may, whether they have done another one after that. Let's try. Okay. Um, board member education. Um, no real items to report other than uh, I offered out to the uh, members of the newly formed properties committee following the um, uh, presentation made by Ned Connors if they would like to take a tour of the uh, facilities and, and both um, Bob Martin and uh, Steve Gross uh, recently for these illustrious uh, buildings. And, Chris, Chris Stanley had already had already been, so he he declined a refresher. So he felt he was he felt he was good. Uh, water purchases graphs are, are provided. Uh, a little bit of a down month. Uh, in a lot of part, pretty wet spring. The annual report um, that that will be ready and prepared for the July meeting um, is currently out to print because we did receive the five. The, uh, the uh, audit report from the um, auditors this morning that was sent also to uh, the folks pulling together the annual report. And as far as personnel, we're pleased to welcome uh, our newest water utility operator, uh, Ryan Lombardo uh, from Riverside. And um, we're also welcoming back Jalen Kopecki back for his third season as Summit Health Assist with our um, operations group. Um, table of uh, capital improvement projects. Uh, projects are all filled and budgets are in um, good shape. Um, so, with that, I give a hand off the operations report by Mike and also to introduce a um, new project manager. Uh, Colin O'Hara, who will we'll give you this out here for. Thank you. Um, so not, not much else to, to talk about. Um, uh, Mike, pump station. What do you mean? I, 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 I was going to end with that. that was, <laughs> that was, that you want to lead it to that. I know, you guys have not to refer to it. Come on. I, 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 I'll bury the lead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things along with uh, the, the reservoir sampling that i um, kind of been talking about um, over the past uh, year, uh, one of the other sampling programs we do is lead and copper. Um, and that one is going to have some big shifts to it in the coming years. But that's one where we get out into actual people's homes and, and try to gauge the, the corrosivity of, of the water. Um, and we take the sample, the, the homeowner actually takes the samples within their home uh, when it sits in the morning. So we are underway on that program. And um, fortunately, we've only had one exceedance of the limits. Um, but a lot of times, honestly, that's associated with that customer doing um, some sort of improvements to their house, whether it's uh, plumbing modifications, uh, changing the fixture, or something to that effect. And they'll actually get a little bit of lead release from the new components. Um, so that program's underway, uh, and we have to be done with that by September, and we'll submit ourselves to the health department. Um, otherwise, we're out in the system, we're doing work. Um, normally, a lot of what we do during the summer is chasing our lead goosenecks to minimize our exposure when it comes to um, lead service line replacements. Since that work um, is now lumped into this year's water main improvement contract, uh, hydrants is the target. Um, so we're going to try to get out and clean up as many hydrants as we can per year now. Um, that and pla older plastic services, which are our frequent flyers on breaks. Um, so picture here is one of those hydrant replacements. Um, has failed uh, valve components, uh, failed uh, undersized. So it gets uh, relayed with a new modern hydrant with reliable components uh, with regards to the valve and the size of the main valve that the water flow through. Um, and then uh, also have a picture here of our guys out there opening up a hole for a, a complex service install into the, the new Chipotle. So the new Chipotle will be coming soon to Barrington. 
Everyone's lunching there. Mike, if you check hybrids, is there a spec that says the steam report has to be X amount of inches above the ground level? Uh, there's a very line on the hydrant themselves. Um, so I don't know if there's an exact spec on the um, for the nozzle, but conventionally it's, it's the height of the wrench so that the wrench can spin freely. But on the barrel of the hydrant, if you look on that picture, um, there's an actual very line that they want the ground to be at. So don't bury it above that line, which then is the same. So if you guys are doing your hydrant checks now, if you find one that's sunk, for instance, if, if are it's, you going to extend it? Uh, we, we do. We try to, yeah. So say if there's a, a new sidewalk project, we do raise them. Um, if the, the ground there that we're not in control of, um, we do put project kits on hydrants as necessary. You take a request? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we go after the, um, the, the, the older and, and damaged ones first, but yeah, yeah we do do that work. We have that they make those kits and we do that. How often are new hydrants put in? Uh, we, in, in a new area? Oh, new, new uh, not that often. Not that um, often. Yeah, the, the, the system's pretty built out, so we don't really add, and there are a lot of hydrants in the system. Gee, I thought it was Gina. <laughs> I thought Dan was going to start dancing. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I, I was asking the question earlier before the meeting started um, and just wandering around my neighborhood. I was saying, where are all the fire hydrants? Um, is there a standard for how many, how, um, what the geographic um, uh, spread is on fire hydrants or anything like that? They're usually around 500 to 1,000. Okay. Um, and then it's based on, um, you know, it's got the population density. There's going to be a lot of things that impact it. Right. Um, but, yeah, in, in our area, it's usually about 500 to 1,000. Some places they're much more dense, and in some places they're not. Okay. Um, if we get a request, we have gotten a request. We've done one in Bristol. We installed a, a, a new hydrant in a, in a um, already populated area, but um, it doesn't happen right. uh, that often. It would be more a function of extending the system. Okay, thank you. Um, and then projects, um, so you talked about everything, but yes, the big thing, <coughs> we have started our phase out of the um, uh, high service system. So we talked about a phased approach of, of expanding the high service system. Um, we've implemented the first phase of that, so now the industrial district um, down Tupelo through Broad Common are all on the high service. So uh, the pump station is feeding those folks. Uh, we have some both pump stations, Medicom pump station and Hope Street pump station, are handling the demand for this new expanded high. And we're monitoring the performance of the station. And we do have some troubleshooting to do, but we're we're in the planning of the next couple neighborhoods to bring on to the, uh, this new expanded high service. So um, still a lot of work to do, a lot of uh, coordinating with this contractor to get them there to finish it. So it, it's still arduous, but um, we, we're there. 30 pounds, 35 pounds and went up on the needle um, at the station. So um, it, it, it's a good improvement. The, there was a letter that had gone up to um, uh, residents, I think. Yes. But, yeah. and, and as we bring on each new phase, that letter will go out to those folks. Um, we're, we actually might send out the next letter tomorrow uh, to the next group of people. Um, there is a susceptibility of failure associated with expanding the high. Um, service lines um, of differing materials may, may fail. Um, we were alerted that one component, um, one facility saw a failure. It seems to be isolated to just a small uh, fitting. Um, not, and we weren't alerted that there was major damage, uh, so it just could have been a, a weak, poorly installed uh, original fitting that didn't see the normal pressure that tends to be. So, um, yeah, all went well uh, on the first rollout. Yes. Not going to work. Not going to work. Every, uh, every new phase, we did it very slowly, very carefully, um, and we'll do that with each 
uh, sequential system. Have you heard from any residents? Um, resident, oh yeah, residents. Um, no. They, they don't call to no. say good job. Yeah. <laughs> you said you did get one. <laughs> well, I got one call from somebody that doesn't live in the area. <laughs> but um, he works. He works. In the area. He works in the area, and he, he was very happy with um, the area. So I hope he was talking about his work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But uh, that, it's uh, it was great to have that stage. I mean, you know, it's been you know, reporting this for years mm -hmm. of the, the delays associated with the supply chain to get uh, you know, equipment in there. Uh, it's it seemingly taking forever to so finally, finally open that up and, and, and get that covered. And plus, not, not to mention, I mean, this the whole idea of expanding high services we've talked about for well, like a decade, I think. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of projects involved. The first phase of that, if you remember, was uh, building the pipelines and, and Medicom Avenue, which already seems like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So those pipelines have been built and put in place, but uh, haven't been, been used until we finalized the pump station. So and as, we, as we expand this, expand the high service incrementally, you know, we'll finally be using those Medicom uh, pipes that were installed a couple years in the past. And we just didn't ask the fire marshal to go back to uh, broad common. So there's a couple of businesses along there that when I went in to do an inspection, they were questioning the need for a fire pump. So they're in, they're in that mode where the fire pumps might not be necessary. Yeah, that would be great. And somebody swung by when we were out there doing the valve operations and said, oh, I'm going to go test the, the bypass around the pumps if I still need yeah, it. So they're, they're waiting to do, a couple of them are waiting to do that because it the pumps are starting to fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Colin. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Colin O'Hara, uh, also known as New Sue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm the new engineer project manager. I started here on uh, May 31st, so a little under a month. Um, I uh, went to CCRI and then over to URI for civil engineering. And uh, after that, I was at um, Barrington Public Works Department. And uh, just through my dealings with uh, Bristol County Water, I found out that Sue was uh, retiring. So I applied and here I am. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, but yeah, everything's been going great so far. I've just been here for a couple weeks, but uh, just getting used to everything. Uh, getting uh, done some service applications and uh, just got up to, speed, uh, up to speed on the projects and everything. So everything's going good. I'm looking forward to, uh, to my career. So thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Um, I, uh, my report has mostly to do with uh, the cleaning and lining work that Dukon is doing. That's, uh, um, let's see, we actually had another progress meeting today about it. Um, portion on rump stick is, uh, has been completed, but um, there's just a few punch list items, such as like uh, doing the sample tap excavations. They got a back they backfill that week today that paid in tomorrow, as well as the uh, public side renewals. Um, so they're on uh, Chachapi Cassett now. Um, it was camera, the line was camera today, and they're uh, lining it next week. So, and then they have uh, four public side renewals to do on Chatsburg Cassett. And then after that, they'll be heading to State Street in Bristol. And um, the Chipotle project was mentioned, and uh, that meter is actually installed on uh, Monday, 24th. So um, that should be all. Uh, Trying to picture where that's going. Is that across from Shelf Station? Yeah, rough, yeah. The new, the new building that's being built? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it used to be a gas station. Yeah, yeah. Gas, gas station. Gas station. Yep. Yeah, it's it's across from the pizza place and the Chinese restaurant. Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. you can still get gas there, though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you. And now our financial report. As uh, Steve mentioned, uh, they finished the audit and we got the audit report today at 11 o'clock. So I call it that day for that annual report. And then uh, I believe Mary today will be out to present to the board. I believe they call next month. So the month in July. In July. Yep. Yeah, so I confirmed that with Raquel before she left, but Mary will be coming out to do the presentation. Um, can we get a copy of the report um, before the Yeah, meeting? I can, I can I'll forward put it up with the package. I'll forward it to Lauren, she can pass it out okay. to you know, email it out to you. It's, we probably don't want to print, print it, but it's like pretty thick. Uh, but yeah, I can, I'll, I'll forward that to her tomorrow morning or whatever. No, yeah, good, tomorrow good summertime reading. Good time, but if you can't sleep very <laughs> excited, sure. I, I've got at least two people over here who are very excited. Uh, nothing about accounting is excited. Uh, all right, so May versus May, page four. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of hate these month versus month things because things skew a lot just based on timing and stuff like that. So the, the revenue for May was a lot higher than it was uh, as of last May. Um, remember, our billings kind of stagger a little bit, so we're billing May. Even if the consumption is a lot lower or higher in May, you're picking up some of you pick up April, some of March, and a tail end of February in that billing. In that billing. So uh, it really has to do with just timing and consumption. Uh, the expenses, the expenses for May are a little bit lower. Um, again, this is largely uh, timing. Um, two big things in there were kind of the uh, same thing that's been the last few months, the administrative expense, because that pension contribution is lower so far through 2024 than it was for the same period of time through 2023. That will end up going up the way uh, we have the, the, I do the math, um, maybe within the budget and within the timing of the pension year end, which is June 30th. So we'll start to see that creep up on both ends on the administrative expenses and uh, billing and customer services. Not a lot of dollars there, but uh, kind of high percent. Um, <clears throat> again, mostly just timing differences. I kind of look through those activities to see if there's anything that jumps out and really nothing jumped out. Um, when we look at the through May, which things start to level off a little bit more, because now you're evening things out a little bit. Um, revenue is up 6%. Um, that's a result of the timing, again, the billing and, and the, the rate increase. Uh, March was really low, but I think the last couple months have been pretty close in terms of consumption. Um, the expenses are great. They're, they're on the budget 2.3%. Um, same item there with the administrative expenses. The majority of that is the pension um, monthly payment. Uh, depreciation amortization is uh, a little bit higher. Uh, again, that's they adjust that every year uh, based on what we have uh, capitalized the previous year. <clears throat> so that's why that's a little bit higher. Um, then operating and maintenance, uh, maintenance expenses are a little bit higher. That's timing. I looked through that and we had some graveling cold patch costs um, this year. We didn't have those costs uh, last year through the same period of time. Dave put some bad deal on some crushed stone or something like that. Uh, page, <coughs> next page, you have the uh, profit and loss of budget. Um, revenue is above but over budget, which is good. Um, should be. Uh, again, I, I <coughs> spread out the budget revenue based on the last four years average. So uh, <coughs> that should kind of even off a little bit as the year goes on. And we do tend to budget revenue conservative. On the expense side, we're under budget as well, 11.29%. Uh, the three big ones in there are the administrative expense, purchase water, and professional fees. Um, the admin expenses are a little bit lower. Some of it is the monthly pension amount. Um, and, so, and probably the bulk of it kind of is the OPEP contribution. <coughs> An OPEP contribution, we do it in February. But when I, I divide it up by 12, so I think in my head, now, now I will loan to myself, I do the budget next year, I will make that entire contribution in February. So that'll kind of make more sense going through the year. Um, uh, the water, or just water is down a little bit, just consumption is down a little bit um, versus what was budgeted. And the professional fees were lower. We just haven't had <clears throat> as much in the way of legal expenses 
and consulting expenses have had to be budgeted so far for the for the three months um, 2024. We get to the next couple pages with the uh, dollars built and gallons delivered. You can see the dollars built and the gallons delivered are both down. Um, the dollars built are down 2.85, and the gallons delivered are down 8.82. Um, and that's timing differences with the uh, with the gallons delivered. Uh, it's not quite going to line up with the billing. Um, and <coughs> That decrease in consumption is offset largely by the rate increase. I mean, eight versus two, that's six percent. Yeah, six percent rate increase last um, February. So that's the bulk of uh, the difference between the consumption and the dollars bill. Uh, we go to the next page, which has a trust fund report. Now that has our debt service ratio on it, and for May it's seven point five two. That's slightly up from April, 7.3 in April. Page 10, we have the pension summary report. Uh, it was decreased for the month of May. Uh, almost $94,000 based on the unrealized losses for the month. Um, the decrease for the whole plan here through May was down about $150,000. And this has been the case so far all year. Uh, that's due to we had that one employee that retired uh, late last year, she took a lump sum. Um, so remember, the pension plan was June 30. And uh, the balance as of May 31st is just over $3.5 million. Obviously, this month, and this month is the last month of the pension plan year end. I am having to send them a bunch of information, and they come off to their presentation in September, October, something like that, mm -hmm. when we learn. Or underfunded, overfunded, or whatnot. Um, and then the last page I have in there, this one just gets in there every three months. Um, or Steve's request. Uh, this is the OPEP trust <coughs> report, and the balance of that as of, is, as of May 31st is uh, just over 1.6 million. That plan year does run coincide with our calendar, our, our fiscal year, too. So. Pretty much it. Yeah, that's for more than that. Any questions of Dan? Oh, great schools over here. Yeah. No hiccups. Okay. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda is um, any of the questions town council? Is anything going on up there we need to know about? They're all looking for re election, so. <laughs> <laughs> Signs will be up for a couple of millions of millions of married too. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wants him to sign in his phone. Okay, next item on the agenda is executive session. I think we have something to talk about. Do we? Uh, we have a motion to go to an executive session without a litigation. Second. Um, we have a um, motion, motion second. and second. Yes. Um, all those in favor of going into executive se session say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're yeah. going into executive session. Seal the minutes of motion the to seal the minutes. Second. Second executive session. Okay, all well in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. The next scheduled meeting, as it says here, is July 25th. I know I'm going to be out of um, this part of the country um, on that day. Short meeting, then. Yeah, it's a short meeting. <laughs> yeah. it's, I'm not saying we won't have a meeting, but maybe. Might talk about risk. Oh, really? We probably <laughs> wait till August first, and I haven't talked to Steve about this. Okay. Which is the following? It's my birthday. It's your birthday. Well, July twenty fifth. Oh. Oh. oh, I mean, I, I just think you know the, the question is: do you, do you always have to have a meeting in one month? Yeah. So, I don't think there's a specific requirement for that. No. no. But, so that's a possibility in any case that it'll be pushed to August 1st. Do you think Tom can't run the meeting? 
But not so we not. can. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, I would I would suggest because if something comes up with the rest yeah. of this world, we probably need to be aware of it. Yeah. Uh, wait yeah. Until August. Oh, I, I suspect that something's going to happen, and we'll probably have to meet before that August, well, that, uh, that, that July twenty fifth. So then we'll deal with it as as it is. Stephen, can you can you bring cupcakes for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> we, also have, we also have the audit report that needs to be presented. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of audit report. In any case, and, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I'll, I'll have a pocket agreement too. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Do you have a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Any opposed? Oh, okay. I guess we're adjourned. Where are you going to go?